Okay, today we are going to have some fun uh, starting our first composite. And what I want you to think about this week and next week, because we're going to spend some time compositing, it takes uh, quite a while to learn, and I think this would be a good time to take it down a notch and really spend some time compositing, also catching up on any revising that you all want to do both this week and next week. Um, right here I have a, tel a television, an old antique television, because I thought that would be kind of cool to go retro. I also have a waterfall, and what I would like to do is set part of this image uh, into the television. And so I'll be cutting out the interior glass section of the this LED screen for the television and I'll place the uh, waterfall in there. The waterfall will be both behind the television and I'll duplicate the layer and place that also in front of the television so that it looks like the water is pouring out of the TV. Now this will probably take more than the 15 minute allotment for the tutorial so I will continue it uh, so that you can get the whole you know, uh, spectrum of what's going to happen here in the composite. We will use the following uh, tools and also hoping that you will follow those objectives. The pen tool is probably one of the most effective tools to use for compositing because it's so accurate. Um, the pen tool is a vector based tool and we, uh, I'll be uploading a link on all of the uh, wonderful aspects of vector, namely that with most things in vector you can enlarge, but in this case you get really beautiful curves out of this tool. Whereas when you use selection tools, you know, the selections can be a little bit more raw. So I want to kind of jump you right into the pen tool and then we will come back to tools like the magic wand, the quick selection tool, but over time these tools have become less prominent in my opinion and this uh, pen tool is just wonderful. Let's get started. What I want to do to begin is I want to cut out this interior section and I'm going to do that using the pen tool uh, and I, that way you can uh, see how this tool works and also hopefully you've looked at all of the web links and the video tutorials so far so you're getting a little more comfortable with this tool. Now this tool will create uh, two to three things if we look up in the options bar. I guess two major um, areas that we use this tool for would be shapes that are just flat color shapes filled with color. And today though I want you or and this week and next week to use just the path. Uh, pen tool makes paths. Paths then can be turned into selections and we're talking elegant selections. So that's the first thing we need to do when we look at the options bar is make sure that we're making a path instead of a what we call shape layer. Now I'm just looking at the new aspects of CS6. In here you have the option to uh, choose a new layer, combine shapes, subtract the font, front shapes, intersect shape areas. This is a lot like what we saw in the selections where you can add to your selection or subtract from your selection. So you will see that these, these probably look familiar to you, but now we're talking about paths. And of course, paths can be turned into selections. So it's really pretty, pretty much a similar kind of idea. We'll talk about aligning later and some of these that won't play a role in this particular exercise. Okay, I'm going to get started and I'm also going to zoom in with Command Plus or Control Plus just so we can see this nice dusty television. And this is the pen tool. What I'm going to do is I am going to start at the bottom of any slope. And so I'll come in here and I'm just going to try to get this gray area. So I kind of look at the pen tool as a way to carve out this region here that's gray. And paths work with curves, um, and that's probably one of the most important things, is that they're very elegant in developing gorgeous curves. So how I start with the pen tool is I'm going to begin at the bottom of a slope. So I'm looking at the curve of this corner, and I'm going to pop right in and take the point 
of the pen tool and click right on the edge and let go. This is called an anchor point. It's a square little point and that allows me to move to the next region. I'm going to come up and over the hill or slope without holding the mouse down, just finding my next region and come in and hold the mouse down. Probably one of the more important things to remember. And as it's held down, it's still held down, I begin dragging the mouse. Now, if my curve, as you can see, is going to the left and up a little bit, then my uh, cursor is doing just the opposite. The cursor then went, uh, let's see here, to the right, and you can see almost sort of looks like uh, not really either up or down, and I'm just fitting it in. You can see if I move the cursor up, the path segment goes down. If I move the path segment, or my cursor, excuse me, move my cursor down, then the path segment goes up. If I move it to the right, the path segment goes to the left. So it's sort of like opposite. You're dragging opposite of what you really want, uh, or you, you're dragging opposite of what your path segment will create. So I've got that fit up really nicely and I'm going to let go of the mouse the whole time I had that held down. And here is our path segment. It's really looking good. I'm going to turn off the layer so you can see it. So this is a path segment. These are anchor points. The one that you're currently working on will always be solid. And these are handles and just to show you, I'm going to use the command key or the control key on the PC. This will let you adjust your curve if you find that, whoops, I'm off a little bit. You can move these. You can move your anchor point as long as your command or control key on the PC is held down. So all of this can be edited either during the making of your, your path or after. So I'm going to let go of the command key and you can see when I have it held down, uh, control on a PC, that the arrow here is, is uh, showing and that's inside of your pen tool but this is the shortcut. Just use your command key on the Mac and the control key on the PC. And I'm going to let go of that so you can see that we have the pen tool back. Let's turn on that picture because I've got to hold that command key down again and readjust this, get this set up again, something like this. Step number two, once you have created this curve, is to option click on the last anchor point. And this is the solid anchor point. Hold down the Alt Option key Alt on a PC, Option on a Mac, and just click and let go like a camera. Click, let go. And then don't drag, don't do anything. It's just a hold down the option, click, and let go of both hands. This gets rid of one of your handles, which really just helps you control your next curve. So now we're doing a repeat. This is now the beginning point at the bottom of a slope. So I'm not holding my mouse down, I'm just kind of coming up and over the slope, kind of think of it like a hill, and I'm going to move over to about this region, and then again I'm going to hold the mouse down, click and hold, don't let up. If you do let up, like whoops, come up to your edit menu and undo that last step, and give it another try. Hold the mouse down and drag the mouse dragging, dragging, and fitting up that beautiful curve. And again, Alt Option on your last um, anchor point, Alt on a PC, Option on a Mac, click and let go. Now we're at the bottom of this slope, so I'm going to just start to do this talk out loud. Now, sometimes you'll have a little blip. I can see here that it looks, you know, you really want a clean connection between one path segment and another. And so I'll probably come back here in a bit and fix that because it's a little, little bit of a strange little bleep going on. Um, that's really what you want to work on is to really develop clean connections between each path segment. This is looking pretty good. Now, I'm going to Option Alt on the last anchor point right here and move on down to this region. Now, look how far I'm going in terms of one path segment. You really want to avoid this. Click, click, straight edge, click. You're going to get a super crunchy looking path and that's totally why 
we use paths or pen tool and paths because they do create beautiful curves. So, you know, I'm going to back up there. We do not want that effect. So I'm going to come all the way down here. You try to get as much out of each curve as you can and click and hold and drag. Now, again, command lets you re-edit so I can kind of set this up where we want it. Now, also, because I'm going to cut out the interior, you know, I don't want any gray to be left behind. So a lot of times you want to make sure that your line, in this case, is just a little outside of the gray because this is going to get deleted. And you'll see what I mean. I'm going to option click again and Here's my next slope. I'm at the bottom, coming around, and click and hold that mouse down. And option and click on the last anchor point. Now I've got that long one coming all the way around. and option click. I'm not really getting exactly on the line for time, but we really do practice how close we can be along an edge. And I'm going to now finish up here, bottom of the slope here, we're coming around. Click and drag, hold the mouse down. If you forget to hold the mouse down, just undo and try it again. Command or control on the PC lets you re work the path and you can see I can try to fit this up a little better. After that I've let go and then I op, uh, option on the last anchor point because I've got two handles. I'll show you why you're option clicking. Some people don't but I really like the result so I, I like to do that but I and I, I think it's uh, really important. But let me show you that here in the next section. I'm closing now the path. I've got this last slope at the bottom of the hill and I'm coming on over the hill or the slope and I'm going to close this and whenever you close you can see that little circle is indicating that you're closing the path. Now paths don't have to be closed but if they're going to be turned into a selection they will be closed. We'll talk about open paths later. So I'm going to click, hold down the mouse and fit up this last region and now we have our path. Let's look at it without the TV on so you can see it. You can, where I'm noticing are little wedgy areas like this or here, you know, you can again hold down your command key and click on these areas and just sort of work those a little bit more if you need. You know, I'm trying to, clicking on the path and then if you want to look at it without the anchor points, you can click off and then back on. And this whole time I have my command key held down and or the control on the PC. But just to show you that if you don't want to do that, whoops, this is the key right here, the white one. It's called your direct selection tool. The only thing is that I stay in the pen tool and just hold the command key down because so often we're editing in the middle of working. Okay, we got to keep going now. And I'm going to looking at this really quickly, hold my command key down and just sort of fit this in. I'm not going to get too worried. It looks pretty good. And now we're going to open up the paths panel. And the paths panel is right here. And the paths panel shows this path that we just created. Anytime you see a work path, please just double click on that. It will save your path save it from being replaced and I'm just going to call this television monitor and click OK and now that's a saved path. Now I'm going to turn this into a selection and one fast way to do that is down here the third button from the left looks like a little dotted selection click on that and now we have this area selected so this is Primo now we have our selection. We're on the right layer over here. You can see we're on the TV layer and of course it's the only one we have in here. Um, you do need to make sure that these are layers. If you have an image that like is your background, if this TV is on the background layer, one of the problems is that the backgrounds uh, 
when you delete on a background, you actually get your background color. You never get transparency. So just so you know, if your image is an actual background before you begin this,